So again, Golden Eagles trying to push offensively a little bit. And may, might have an opportunity here inside the box. Good job by Till. As again, Lamelli was right there. If Till doesn't stop that, Lamelli might have a goal as she was on sides. I'd say right on her post, so the only option is for that ball to be crossed in, but it's an in the six. It's a dangerous ball flying out. Springer stepped, able to grab it. Sometimes you might see goalkeepers just try to kind of punch that away because it's at such a tough angle. But able to get it, both hands firmly grasp it. It's a great play by Cassidy Beretta, the freshman out of Bellbrook, Ohio. And as you see Phelps playing more in the attack now for Evansville, you see a midfielder transition back. Chance for Molly Lear, good. Save by Nerdeman. Wow, good left footed save as Lear had a big time opportunity to maybe ice this one at 2-0. You just watch this, you see Lear dribbling in near side of the box. Her eyes are kind of looking toward that far post. And for Nerdeman, you're you're there on your near post, so yeah, you think the, the shot would go far. So they can try to sneak it in and a good kick save. Now takes the corner chance for the Purple Aces. Mandy Ham crosses it in. And it will be corralled by Nerdeman and she shows. That was, that was really the first time we got an idea of why she was one of the best goalkeepers in the country last season. Because again, as a goalkeeper, you're on your near, especially coming from that direction with the way the Evansville attack was building up, you're thinking, okay, I'm here on my near post, the space is to the far, so you, you think the shot's gonna go to your, to your perspective of the goalkeeper to your right, to that far post. So you prepare for that mentally, but then you react to the near post shot, and again, making the kick save. Tuesday, men's college soccer between the Butler Bulldogs and the Evansville Purple Aces here at Aaron McCutcheon Stadium. I'm Alex Gould alongside the one and only Preston Leinenbach. And Preston, a battle between two teams here in the middle of the season that are really trying to get going. Yeah, trying to get their seasons going in the right direction for Evansville. They're trying to get it going in the right direction for the Missouri Valley Conference toward postseason play. And for Butler going in the right direction in Big East play in a rare non-conference matchup here in the month of October. For Butler, it's pretty simple. When Ghoul goes, they go at 2-2-1 two, two and one when he records a point this season for Butler. Yeah, not only can he create for himself scoring goals, but also help out his teammates setting them up with assists. However, when he does not score a point doing either one of those, Butler's had a tough time against their opponents this year. They'll need him to be sharp here tonight against Evansville and the Purple Aces. Speaking of the Purple Aces, 1-4-4 one, four and four overall. Four draws on the season that could have gone either way, but play a lot more confidently at home, 1-1-2 one, one and two here at Aird McCutcheon Stadium. Yeah, just a lot better at home this year. I mean, you could basically wipe out the IU game. Great opponent, obviously nationally ranked a couple weeks ago, kind of an anomaly. You take those numbers out, this Aces team is very good at home, and that could be vital for them later on this season when the Missouri Valley Conference Championship is here in Evansville. Just trying to do whatever they can to get in their offensive half of the field again in Evansville, doing a good job here early on, and like I said, finding some holes. Good chances getting into the box. It'll be interesting to see, again, you know, obviously, for for both sides playing, maybe some guys who don't normally play in the starting 11, just kind of the chemistry, the feel for playing together as a starting 11. Obviously, they play against each other a lot in practice, but sometimes there's, especially when you have upperclassmen and a roster filled with upperclassmen, there's obviously a lot of good chemistry and, and good team play after playing multiple years together, but... Kind of just kind of a growing game, a growing experience type of game for both sides here tonight. Yeah, the Bulldogs won the Big East regular season last year. They were upset by Xavier in the semifinals on penalty kicks. They were tournament champions just the year before that in 2016 in the Big East. 2016 tournament champions against Creighton, the former Missouri Valley Conference member. This one goes out of bounds, throw in for Simon Waver and the Purple Aces. Last year, the Bulldogs made it to the third round in the NCAA tournament before getting knocked off by one of the top seeds in Wake Forest. So this is a team who's not used to struggling so far. 0-3 in Big East Conference play, coming off a 2-0 loss to St. John's in Queens, New York. Good job by Frederick Reimer to come get that ball. Yeah, taking charge there, claiming it. Baum there, right there to kind of shield off, to give him room to make that 
kick outside of the box. Yeah, the Bulldogs, the, the scoring has not been the problem. They're just two goals back of the lead in the Big East right now. They have 12 goals on the season in nine matches played, but they've allowed 18 goals on the year, a team that allowed less than a goal a year just a year ago winning the Big East regular season. And what do you think that Paul Snape has had to say to his team you know, midway through to the season, knowing that the defensive struggles are pretty real. Obviously, again, it's just one. It's just it's a it's going to be a grind, and you got to fight through it, fight through the adversity. But more importantly, as a defense, they just got to keep their shape. They got to play tight, stay organized. Obviously, communicate. Because again, like I said, the offense, there's no problem there. I mean, over two goals a game, and but when you're giving up three. Because they play really throughout the season. You look up their schedule. They've played in some high-scoring affairs, really. Just gotten to tighten it up. And, again, I think part of that is just overall the toughness, whether it be physically or mentally, staying tough in the back. They've lost five. If they kick it into the box. It is into the box. Chance for the Purple Aces. Good job by Butler for now. Opportunity for Logan Muck. Good move. The shot blocked by Ryan Clark. Another opportunity. It's a goal. Matias Norris gets the Purple go in the first half. What a move by the freshman Logan Muck. A great save by Clark, but then the rebound by the other freshman Matias Norris. The Purple Aces strike first. They lead it 1-0. And it's all about that second chance. I mean, look at it. I mean, great save there by Clark. Able to read the ball through traffic. But it's just that second chance Norris right there to find the ball and one time with the left foot into the low right corner of the netting. As that shot from Matias Norris actually hit Clark, deflected off his left leg, but then into the back of the net. A good corner from Jesse Stafford. Lacey Butler could not clear it. And the Purple Aces strike first with 9.30 to go in the first half. And the big thing about it, you saw the way that they set up on the field for both sides for that corner kick. But Evansville only had three initially to start out to make runs with a little bit of what I call a little bit of a, I guess you would say a, a staggler behind the play to trail the play and wait for that deflection. Because more often than not, if the defense is going to clear it. They're going to clear it with their head and it's going to go back to maybe the top of the box at most or maybe halfway toward the middle of the field. So that way, Evansville has one to recollect that loose ball and then send it back in on the second chance, and that almost happened there. The only time the defense can really clear it away by, is probably the second or third ball that gets booted around outside the box toward the width of the field where they can set up to actually clear it with the foot. Otherwise, they're just trying to head it away. That's all they're trying to do. Rebounds. Jesse Stafford Lacey plays it pretty long into the box, headed by Baum. Chance, Ryan Harris, good save, Ryan Harris again over the goal. A great save by Ryan Clark. He's had to make a couple of them now. Paul Snaples is just gonna scratch his head and the defensive opportunity, a good job by Clark. I mean, just to, right there, I think it's a good view of it. You can start to see where Evansville is winning these headers in the box. There's a lot of ball watching going on. There's not a lot of man marking. As you see, Norris win the first one. And the second one going out toward goal, just an easy step up. And then Ryan Harris right there, who initially the start of the play marks the goalie. Not sure by who. Let's see Johansson to Ryan Harris. What a job by Harris. A deflection. So it was Ryan Harris who gets the credit for the goal. Unbelievable. And we're tied at two with 9.44 to go. I said initially before even the corner kick, Stafford Lacey. With the shot, and Peck was right there in the middle of the box. Wide open space for both of them. There was no white shirts around either one of them to lead up to the corner kick. And that's why Harris, that's why he's there. That is why he is on the goalie to begin the corner kick to start off, and why he stays in the six. For balls that just don't have enough to quite get through, might take a deflection where he can easily just poke it in and clean up the mess. That's why he's in that position on a corner kick. I think that's something where you just try to, again, with Reimer coming out and missing, you just go ahead and put it toward goal and see what happens, take your chance on that. But for Reimer in his last few games, he's been more aggressive coming out off his line, charging the ball. 
and even that even includes going outside the box to do so but that one's such a tough one for him to even try to get a piece on because it was bouncing on its way toward him and, and toward the play that I think if for him if he if he could to settle back, replay it, hindsight 2020. He would wait a little yeah. bit and see if that play develops in front of him inside the box where the ball is settled down onto the ground, then come out and charge and try to make a tackle into it. Because again, that's a tough one for him where he comes outside the box. He obviously can't pick it up with his hands. So he basically just has to try to head it away or get some kind of kick on it. But the ball, again, just bouncing in the air. Just That's a tough one for him to handle that far away from goal. As a sophomore, look at that cross. And... It's snowing here in Evansville. Definitely is a late goal that at this point could almost be the difference here in the last minute 41. Not a lot of time for Drake to make it back up. We talked about how Waver was the kind of the key guy that Drake mentioned, how they wanted to lock down, keep him in the defensive line of the field, not allow him to sneak up to the attack. Well, the second half, Waver has been able to see more chances in the offensive attack besides just his throw-ins, as I mentioned earlier in the game is he's been able to use the width of the field, his speed a little bit more. He finally got a chance to serve one in and got the perfect assist to Snow to get the go-ahead goal. And great give and go. Referees said he was onside, right foot, far side. Goal for the Purple Aces. Huge goal before halftime. Yeah, like, cause like I said, Valparaiso struggling this season when trailing at halftime. Have not come back from behind when trailing at the half, but we were just talking about how good Valpo's defense has been today and yet a little bit of a breakdown where on that little bit of a give and go that was started by Stafford Lacey in the midfield, no one picked him up going around the diagonally away toward the corner flag until it was too late and he had the ball at his feet ready to make that shot on goal. And Valpo kind of got caught ball watching a little bit instead of watching the man going off the ball making the run, that being Jesse Stafford Lacey. And again, making that shot with a good placement of the shot as well. Give him credit for that. Waver to Davis Peck. Davis Peck tried to get it in midair. What a save by Nacho Miras. Oh my goodness. Wow. And that's just going for it right there by Miras because there's no way he saw that ball coming off the deflection. He's going one way to where he's right, whereas Peck is going in toward the other direction to his left post. And you would think that maybe a deflection would go toward that way based on where Peck's momentum was carrying him, but we were right toward the sprawled out, just kind of reaching every which direction to make himself get something on that to make that save. Really a spoiler here on senior night and homecoming for the Purple Aces faithful. Oh, what a shot. No chance for Frederick Reimer. He boots it back into the net. And now all of a sudden, we talked about parking the bus. Purple Ace is going to try and push up. They'd like to try and win it in regulation. What a bender by Rose. We're knotted up at one. Unbelievable. Uh, it's just an incredible shot. Spot on with the ball. Again, basically, I mean, he really didn't even get it to really get the set. He basically took that right away as soon as the ball came to his feet. And I mentioned Weber going back because I think, like the Amazon defense, the two defenders were playing so far out of the play, you didn't expect them to, to be a part of it. But they kind of snuck in there, especially with Rose. And he wasn't counted for. And, the short pass left him a wide open shot with no purple shirts around him. He could just let it rip. And unbelievable bend, top shelf. And one of the biggest things talked about Nacho Mirrors, Coach Avery mentioned this week, the biggest thing, the way he said he's a modern goalkeeper. What does that mean? It's not. He's not just about making saves. He's about getting himself in preparation to make the save. What he does ahead of the actual play, and that includes getting in position and sliding his feet over to the right spot. Really good with his feet, Nacho Miras.